morning. morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to this morning's worship service. I'm surprised and pleased that as many came today. We had to cancel some of our uh, church stuff that was to be held yesterday, and uh, um, I don't know how much snow you got here, but we got about six inches yesterday over in Brown County. It took uh, quite a bit of snow. So anyway, grateful that everyone could be here, and in the name of Christ, welcome. We have a uh, rather wonderful and special uh, worship service uh, today, and it's going to run just a little bit longer, uh, not to worry about that. Uh, uh, Frederica's back for uh, uh, a few weeks uh, from the Netherlands, we're grateful about that, and Ava is playing with her, and their, their number is going to last about 8 to 10 minutes, so I would suggest what you do is just lean back and close your eyes and enjoy some spectacular music, and you're going to uh, experience that in just a few minutes. Also, like to draw to your attention that the poinsettias, the Christmas poinsettias, uh, you can uh, order them in the Narthex. There's a sign-up sheet back there. They're twelve, eight dollars a piece. And on December 12th, which is next Sunday, will be the last day that you can purchase those. So, if you'd be so kind, uh, get those. Now, where is Miriam? Is she here? She wanted to read something. Oh, there you are. Okay, Miriam. Miriam wanted to read something, please. And explain what this is for. My mother died on December the 12th, 1999. 11 years next Sunday, there's a poem, Christmas in Heaven. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world below, with tiny lights like heaven stars reflecting on the snow. The sky is just a thick word, please wipe away that tear. For I am spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I sent you a special gift from Heavenly Home above. I sent you <coughs> a memory of my undying love. After all, love is a gift more precious than poor gold. It is always more important in stories Jesus told. Please love and keep each other as my Father said to do. For I can't count the blessings and love he has for you. So have a Merry Christmas and wipe away the tear. Remember I'm sending Christmas to Jesus Christ this year. In loving memory of Noel Michael, enter into the kingdom of heaven on December 12, 1999, from her children, Miriam Michael, Paul Michael, Richard Michael. And I should note that uh, Miriam's brother Dick is here with his beloved wife, Gail, from Lafayette, right? right. West Lafayette. West Lafayette. West Lafayette. Yeah, West. Left. Anyway, where Purdue is. <laughs> We're glad you're here, and uh, we, we don't get to see you very often, so uh, um, just happy to be here. Also, I'd like to draw your attention, as you know, we have all sorts of uh, fun stuff to buy down the stairs. Um, uh, and I do want to draw your attention that those of you who would like to buy the price of stones, uh, which is the, the story of the, the miracle in uh, uh, Neaka, the village of Neaka, in which our church has very, been very much a part, you can do that and make great Christmas presents. They're $26 a piece. So I want to draw that to your attention. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes, Alan. Today is the last day if you want to uh, utilize the script program. I need to have your order forms in by noon tomorrow. That way we'll have the order uh, here next Sunday. All right, are there any other announcements that need to be made? I want to draw to your attention uh, one final thing, and that is that the Advent Prayer Vigil will continue this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock <coughs> here in the sanctuary. And uh, hopefully you can sign up for that and uh, please be a part of that. It's very important. With that said, let us begin our worship with an invitation to silence, followed by the introit and the lighting of the Advent wreath.
Today we uh, continue the Advent season by lighting the second candle, the purple candle, the candle of peace. I will read from Isaiah 17, or 60, 65, verses 17 to 25, if you'd like to read along with me. Isaiah 65, 17 to 25. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. <clears throat> The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in an infant in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years the one who dies at a hundred will be thought of as a mere child the one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed they will build houses and dwell in them they will plant, plant vineyards and eat their fruit no longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant, and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not live, labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed by misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, help us to understand your promises and your peace. The peace that passes all understanding and came to us from you, the Prince of Peace, whose birth and life and death and resurrection we revere and celebrate, and whose teachings give us our pathway to this peace you promise. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Join me in the call to worship as we worship today, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is here. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he sees, what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the Lord. And they sigh with the equity for the meaning of the earth. And they shall smite the earth with the rod of the sun. And with the breath of his lips he shall stay with 
Righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist, and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. The wolf shall come out of the land, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the family together, and the little child shall lead them. Isaiah 11. As you are able, please stand and let us join together in the opening hymn, number 41, O Come, All You Faithful. Youngsters here, don't we? got five, but it's not even Christmas. Oh, you mean they're under the tree? Ah, but maybe there's a lump of coal in there. What do you think? No. Oh, is that where you put the lump of coal? See, I never got one, so I don't know anything about it. You what? You don't know what said on it either. All right. Well, I got a question to ask you. Jesus, uh, some of the, what are some of the things that we call Jesus? We call him King, right? Lord. Lord. What else? Fabi. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> 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 Savior. Savior. Fabi. 
Savior. What else do we call Jesus? Prince of what? Prince of Peace. Now why do we call Jesus the Prince of Peace, do you suppose? <coughs> well, what's the opposite of peace? Sawe. Sawe, I'm sorry. What's the opposite of it? What's the opposite of peace? War. Or aggression or being mean, right? So is Jesus mean? Does Jesus hit you? No. no. What does Jesus do? No, he's nice to you. He wants to be nice to you. So anyway, this time of year, what we do is we think about Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And that means somebody who's going to uh, make things good for you in your life. All right? Now, with that said, oh, I have something here I wanted to show you. Well, I'll talk to you about it next week. What I want you to do now is, do you have your hymnals, your little song books? Do you know this song, I Love You, Lord? You have no idea. Well, I'm going to sing it for you, and then you can follow me in the choir. Please help me, all right?
Once again, thanks as always to the choir and uh, the good work. And I and I'm serious. Thanks to everyone. <coughs> Come, excuse me. <coughs> Coming this morning, I what with the ice on the roads, and certainly the parking lot was iced over quite a bit this morning. I'm just really grateful that so many people were able to come. We will enjoy our uh, um, prayers for the Church Universal and Church in particular, and we will sing, of course, the Lord's Prayer uh, following that, and then we'll share the peace. And with the coals going around, if we could just share the peace with the people in our pews, I think that would be really appropriate today. It's quite a bit of um, sickness going around right now. Are there any prayer concerns that we need to lift up? Yes. Last Wednesday night, um, my grandson's mother, two-year-old child, uh, were in a, a terrible car accident, a rollover, and his mother broke her neck. Oof. The two-year-old child is going to be okay, and his mom's going to be okay, but the, the, um, my grandson's mother is What's her name? Her name is Patricia. Patricia. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bill. When our daughter Mary Fern had surgery last week to have some cysts removed from her, her head, and uh, the operation was on. Right. And so she's uh, recovering from it. Pray for complete recovery. Our, our friend Herman in Germany. Uh, we're still battling uh, with the tumor. Andy. I had a coworker, Daryl, pass away and to um, be with his friends and family. Yes. My brother Ken. The surgery is next week, right? 21st. 21st. All right. David? Yes. Dale. Bill? Not now. Okay. We'll turn our attention to prayer then, and let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, we've come to you this beautiful morning, albeit it's a little cool and a little dangerous, but we've come, and we've come to proclaim our affection for you and to sing songs of praises and to lift up concerns that we have. We give thee thanks for this good morning and the opportunity to do just that. And so it is we ask that you abide with these particular people that we lift up to you, some of whom we do not know, but we know that you will be with them. And so it is that we ask that you be with Patricia and that you be with her in her recovery and with her little one <coughs> in this time of great stress and difficulty. We ask that you be with the high team's friend Herman in Germany as he battles um, um, this tumor. We would ask that you be with his surgeons and with his family and that you would take him through this difficult time that you be with uh, Andy's co-worker, Daryl, and him in particular with his family, and that you hold Daryl in the, in, the, in the hollow of your hand, and you call him by name, and that he be received into your heart. We give thee thanks for your continuing healing in Mary Fern, and that you would be with Tim on the 21st for, um, again, another surgery. We pray for those in this fellowship who um, choose to remain quiet and confidential regarding their concerns, and we lift them up to you, O oh Lord, and ask that you take care of each one of those people. We ask also, Lord, that you be with those in this world, in our community, who um, would pursue violence, and we would ask that they be forgiven, and that their confused minds would be cleaned of unrighteousness and that, that they might find clarity and understanding. We would pray for them as well. Gracious and Heavenly Father, most of all we would ask that this Advent season be one of joy for us, 
uh, one of understanding and one of action. We pray for our president and ask that you abide with him and you protect his family. We ask that you be with our leaders and guide them in ways of righteousness. We pray for those who are our enemies because we remember once we were enemies toward thee and you forgave us. Gracious and heavenly God, receive us now in this prayer as we stand now and sing to you this, the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. We continue now with the sharing of our tithes and our offerings.
all that we have, all that we are, come from your hand, and we give back to you that which is yours. We pray your blessing upon the tithes, the offerings, the gifts that the people of God give back to you. We pray that they might be used for the glory of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
Thank you, ladies. That was quite beautiful. And there must be some advantage in being tall and playing the violin. I'm not sure what it is, but it works. Tall and Dutch, yeah. Tall and Dutch. Tall and Dutch. No, just Dutch. For us. Just to the right. Well, let's turn our attention to the hearing of the Word of God. First, from the book of Isaiah. As the prophet Isaiah speaks of things that will be in the future when God begins to bring peace to the earth. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress in the past. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. From Isaiah chapter 32, verses 15 through 20. The Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. Justice will dwell in the desert, and righteousness live in the fertile field. The fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in distributed places of rest, or excuse me, in undisturbed places of rest. Though hail flattens the forest and the city is leveled completely, how blessed you will be, sowing your seed by every stream and letting your cattle and donkeys range free. From the New Testament, answering the prophecy of Isaiah, comes Mary's song. The angel has appeared to her. She has presented herself for the work of the Lord through God's Spirit. And thus she sings, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even 
as he has said to our fathers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Thank you, Reverend. As I spoke about last week, this Advent season, what we're going to be spending most of our time on is meditating on how uh, Christmas is, is both about giving as well as receiving. And that indeed is the, seems to be the spirit of, of Christmas. And I might add uh, um, that uh, uh, quite unexpectedly, in our Advent study for this year uh, by uh, Henry Nowen, um, it, it turns out that he's uh, um, doing exactly the same thing that I have been about, and that is the idea of uh, the nature of Christmas being uh, both receiving as well as giving. And I hope that all are following these uh, uh, Advent meditations. With that said, so in the spirit of giving, <coughs> um, two yes, two, I feel so over all of a sudden. Two yes, count them, two gifts are coming your way. The first uh, has nothing to do with me, um, but it is because 19 years ago, um, Suhail and uh, Alejandro were received um, with love into this congregation, and as a result, they have annually given a reception and giving uh, uh, a Christmas party. And this year is no exception, of course. It is this Saturday, the 11th, I think, what, at 6 o'clock, something like that? I think so. And those of you who have never been, you need to go. It is just a great deal of fun. The only thing you have to bring is your appetite, I guess, and your singing voice. Marianne, will you be playing again this year, I suppose? Mm -hmm. I hope so. And the lads will be singing. It's a lot of fun. Now, again, kind of Oprah-esque, uh, in this happy spirit, because 19 years ago on January 1st, um, I was received by this fellowship to be pastor. I have a gift to give to you as well. I'll give that to you later if we have time. I do want to say it is one of the best gifts I've ever given. And everybody gets it. But I may have to wait till next week, although I do have it with me now. But... Uh, I don't like to keep people late, you know, and things like that. So if I have time and if you remind me, I might give it to you, all right? Well, you'll get it sooner or later, but it is great. And Brynn and I celebrated that gift this morning, so, right? And it is wonderful, so. By request. Huh? What? By my request. By, by your request. Speaking of giving and receiving in this uh, Advent book, uh, Henry Nowen, I wish to continue uh, our meditation with reading in toto his words for last Friday, December 3rd. And you need to understand, I, I don't read this and then pattern my meditations after it. I don't, I don't do that. That would be cheating. And uh, I just find that it's interesting that great minds, as always, think alike, as so does great spiritual hearts uh, beat in the same cadence. And so... The old Dutchman and I now are beating in the same heartbeat of love. That said, this is what he says, Fear frequently leads us to strike first. This is a scripture. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, Psalm 130. We consider waiting a waste of time. I'm going to just do a sidebar. Have you noticed in today's society we can't be quiet? Have you noticed that yet? We always got to be, oh, hello, hello, yes, I'm important. I'm on my cell phone again. Hi, yes, I'm talking. I'm, be, I'm talking. I can't be quiet. I'm talking. I, I, I got to keep doing, I got to keep doing things because I'm important. <coughs> And, and, and so now, of course, is saying you're not important, you're unimportant, this is not important, you're not spiritual, you haven't learned a thing, because you don't know how to be quiet. 
we consider being quiet, we consider waiting a waste of time. Because our, all, our culture is always saying, get going. Do something. Show sure you're able to make a difference. Don't just sit there and wait. Waiting seems like a dry desert between where we are and where we want to be. We do not enjoy such a place. We want to move out of it and do something worthwhile. Waiting is even more difficult. Now, this is important. Waiting is even more difficult because we are so fearful. Not just as individuals, but as whole communities and nations. Fear explains why it is so hard to wait and how tempting it is to act. This is the root of a first strike approach to others. Those who live in a world of fear are more likely to make aggressive, hostile, destructive responses than people who are not so frightened. The more afraid we are, the harder waiting becomes. Oh, joy. There are no coincidences, as I mentioned, <laughs> and certainly there are no coincidences for those who abide in Jesus Christ. It's as if God, knowing beforehand that our church would be vandalized, along with other places of worship, gave us these words to consider, and I'm so glad about that. In fact, I think everybody knows, maybe you don't know it, but uh, two weeks ago, uh, on the, I think it was Friday the 19th, sometime that evening, early in the morning, <coughs> 20, something like that, um, uh, a rock was heaved in a, into a basement window. As a matter of fact, this rock. 32-pound rock. It's pretty heavy. I better put it there. That rock. And what anger must have motivated someone. Incidentally, this rock looks exactly like the rock that was thrown through the window at uh, the Chabad Center. Had a picture on, uh, on Channel 8 TV. So obviously the perpetrator went to some quarry or some place and picked up a truckload or a pickup truckload or something with a half a dozen rocks. And this is, this is what the person used, this rock here. I have better use for it. Anyway, I, what anger must have motivated the perpetrator? Now, we know this act of violence was uh, directed at Temple Shir Tikva, uh, whom we invited here to this fellowship to worship uh, every Friday on Sabbat uh, in perpetuity, as far as we're concerned. They're good people. Rabbi Balaban's a great guy, and they've been a real blessing. Anyway, because we invite them in, clearly, uh, this church, because we invited them in, and also because Jews were in the church, um, the rock was, was heat, and I, I guess to scare people or to send a message, or I, I don't quite understand why. Um, but I guess it was to get our attention, and I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out why. Thus noted, the question for this congregation, it seems to me, <coughs> is what is, an appro what is an appropriate and decidedly Christian uh, response, not reaction, response uh, to this incident. Well, we cannot be afraid. We, we don't have that luxury because we abide in the love of Christ. And as we all know, and as scriptures clearly told us, and as hopefully we all live, there is no fear in love. So if you love Jesus and abide in his love, then you can't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Why would, why would I be afraid? I'm not afraid. Now, because we're not afraid, we can't hate. Well, hatred comes out of fear. Well, if you're not afraid, there's no reason to hate. And if there's no reason to hate, then there's no reason to strike back in anger or you know, viciousness or <coughs> retribution or anything like that. Hatred is opposed to love. And so that's out as well. So we can't be afraid and we can't be hateful. So what are we going to do? Well, we have no power to find the vandal. Um, I don't have, I'm, I'm not going to get in my car.
hard to drive around town and try and find the vandal, you know? And even if I found the vandal or we found the vandal, we don't have any authority to prosecute, we don't have any authority to convict, and we don't have any right or authority to condemn. So what are we going to do? And we can't whine. That's not permitted either. So we can't hate. We can't um, whine. Um, we can't have fear. We can't convict. We can't prosecute. We, got, we can't do much of anything except not a whole lot. Except we do have a power that obviously the perpetrator doesn't have. And maybe we can work on sharing that power with that person. And that's the power of love uh, as proven by Jesus Christ and demonstrated in his followers for centuries. It's a particular kind of power, and it's called the power of forgiveness. Power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the intentional decision to receive a sinner into one's heart and then give that person the love of Jesus Christ. Deception and giving. Sounds very Adventish to me. Deception and giving. After all, God so loved the world, God so received the world, uh -huh, that he in turn gave his only begotten son. See, receiving and then giving. So God receives and then God gives. Ah, I like that. And we do the same. We will do the same. By receiving the sinner into our lives and into our hearts, and in turn giving that person a wonderful Christmas present. That's what I'm going to give to this person a wonderful Christmas present. I'm going to give this person the gift of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to do that by forgiving the person. That's what I'm going to do. And I think that's what we need to do. Well, that's what we will do as well. Now, as a result, then, from this day forward, this rock serves no more as an instrument of destruction, but rather as a symbol of peace. And this rock no longer is a symbol of hatred, but one of love. This rock is no longer a tool of condemnation, but rather one of forgiveness. See, that's the power we have. That's the power I have. We will pray that the vandal would receive Jesus Christ this Advent season. That's an idea that this person receive Jesus Christ into his heart. That's it, I pray. And I will pray for this person even as I'm praying for this person right now to come to know Jesus Christ and to come to know that he has been forgiven, or she, or they, are forgiven. And I hope for them a very Merry Christmas. That's it, I hope for them. Amen. Now, I do have a question. As the children are coming forward and we get ready um, and prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, would you like your gift today or would you like for me to give it to you next? Today. Today? today? Oh, you won't be here next Sunday, so you want it today. <laughs> and all that sermon on selfishness. And all that. <laughs> Well, I will give it to you as you walk out. The blessing. What? Blessings. No, it's better than a blessing. <laughs> it is a gift. That, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, don't go, oh. You know you invite people over to your home, some of you who can do that. And, you, you know, you, you go through all this time and you say, well, you know, we have the same thing for... <clears throat> You know, I, I give them rolls, or we have a, um, a, a, 
brunch and everything seems not to be exactly right. It's the same old, same old thing. So what I'm going to give you, I'm serious now, this is great, absolutely wonderful, is a recipe. Don't laugh. No, you watch. You have laughed at me for the last time because your wife is going to make this, and next Sunday you will come in the pulpit, oh, Mr. Laughing Man, and you will say, <laughs> and you will say, David was right. This is the greatest recipe you can have for guests over for a Sunday brunch or for breakfast. It takes about, well, hardly any minutes, four ingredients. I fix it for my wife. I give it to her in bed sometimes. It's absolutely spectacular. It's a great gift. You will thank me for it next Sunday, Mr. <laughs> Laughing Man. <laughs> And that's what it is, and when you walk out, take as many as you want, and you will thank me and Brenda later. And, and Brenda, if you don't believe me, believe in my wife, because she is telling you the truth. This is wonderful. So there's a gift. And yes, you're going to get another gift, because I'm in such an old room. <laughs> All right. Now, um, eating is part of the Christian tradition and a serious part of it, because that's where the early church came to have fellowship when they thought about the return of Jesus Christ. And that's when the early church had fellowship when they thought about Advent. It wasn't called Advent. That's when the early church came together for very sacred times. And indeed, that's what we've done now. And yes, there is humor enjoying that just as, we, just as we've enjoyed. And now it's time that as the early fellowships did, that we turn our hearts now to prepare uh, through him and through prayer that we would receive the gifts that Christ has given us. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, we would ask that you would uh, receive our, our, our very lives as we prepare our souls uh, for the sacrament of Holy Communion. We understand that you are the one who has invited everybody, and so we would encourage all to enjoy your blessing and your grace. Amen. Please um, remain seated, and let us sing the first two... Uh, verses of our communion hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and I encourage and invite the uh, elders to come forward. <laughs> Christ has invited us to. He has invited us to his house, to his heart, that we might enjoy fellowship with him. Let us begin with prayer. Gracious and heavenly God, and Son Jesus Christ, by your forgiving grace, did you choose to invite us into your life? And though we were yet sinners, you died for us, and though we were yet stubborn, Thou forgave us, and though we seem to reject your gifts, 
you still provide the spiritual food that we need. And for that, we're thankful. And so we heard you this morning calling, and even though the weather was dangerous, we have come and assembled here. It might it happen to be with you. And for that, we're grateful. Amen. So it is on the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body. And in a similar way, did Jesus take the cup, indeed the cup of the new covenant, and he said, and every time you drink of this, you do so in remembrance of me. Dear friends, this is the feast of the people of God, and men and women and little ones, indeed, will come from the north and from the south and the east and the west, and they'll be here to dine with Jesus Christ. This is the kingdom of God. You are in it. On the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread. And Jesus Christ, lover of my soul, said, This is my body, and he who believes in me will never be hungry. Eat all of this. And in a similar way, also the cup. Thank you. 
O Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy on me. O Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy on each person here. O Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. And Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, and you are the branches, and apart from me you are nothing. Drink all of this. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together. We would ask that we would continue the practice of imitating Christ. And that as we imitate Christ, we would be more forgiving, more receiving, more accepting, more truthful with ourselves and with each other. That we would be people of peace. And that we would study war no more. We thank you for this meal that you've invited us to enjoy. May it nourish us and encourage us to be as thee. Amen. Please stand and we'll close with the singing of the final two verses of our Christmas hymn, The Little Town of Bethlehem. blessings upon them and the beautiful work that they continue. We ask continued blessings upon each person in this fellowship and all that they do for the cause of peace and for the cause of righteousness and beauty. And I would ask that the blessings of Jesus Christ then rest upon each and every person here, now and forevermore. Amen.